So we're going to be looking at concentrations um, calculations. We have several different equations to calculate concentration. We're going to start with mass volume percent problems. Um, in the first problem, I have a mass volume percent, or they want me to calculate the mass volume percent given the liters of solution and grams of glucose. So the nice thing about these equations is you don't have to figure out usually what equation you need to use because it's given to you in the question. So in this question, um, it's telling us to use the mass volume percent equation. And that is grams of solute oops, over milliliters of solution. And then of course, since it's a percent, we need to multiply that by 100. So we need to plug in the values given into this equation to solve. So we are given the grams of glucose. So that is my grams of solute. The solute being the substance that is dissolved and that makes sense, the solid being dissolved. All right, now the second piece of information we need is milliliters of solution. And they gave us liters of solution. All right, so my first step is gonna be to convert this liters to milliliters and since it is a metric to metric conversion, I can use that King Henry died drinking chocolate milk. Now, when I'm using this scale here, what I need to put in that empty space, in this case, is gonna be liters, because I'm talking about a volume. So that's where my L is gonna go. Now, liters is where I am. That's what I was given the information in, right? The volume was given in liters. I want to be in milliliters. So to get there, I'm gonna move the decimal point three times to the right. So starting with this number, 0 0.30, I'm gonna start at the decimal point and I'm going to move that decimal point just like I did here, three times to the right. So one, two, three, I have an empty space. So what's gonna go in that empty space is going to be a zero. So point three zero liters is equal to 300 milliliters. So since that's successfully converted, I now have both pieces of information I need and in the correct units. So let's plug that in now to the equation. So percent mass volume is what I'm solving for. So I'm gonna plug in my grams of solute 15 of glucose, and divide it by the milliliters of solution. I am then going to multiply that by 100 to get it in a percent. So I get 15 divided by 300 multiplied by 100. And I get 5%. I'm going to write 5.0 because notice I need two significant figures. So that means the mass volume percent, 5% of it is made up of glucose, um, and the rest mass volume percent will pro most likely be water as the solvent. So it doesn't specify that it's water, but that's a uh, general solvent used. All right, so let's move to this next one now. A little bit harder problem because we're going to need to rearrange this equation. So reading, it says it wants us to calculate the number of grams. So we're gonna be calculating grams of solute given the solution volume and the percent. So we need to rearrange this equation then to solve for grams of solute. So let me write this equation down so we can rearrange it. So we have grams of solute on top and milliliters of solution on bottom. I'm gonna multiply that by 100, okay? So to rearrange it, we need to get basically everything over to this side and grams on one side by itself, since that's what we're solving for. So notice we're multiplying by 100. So to get rid of 100, we need to divide. Whatever we do to one side of the equation, we need to do to the other. So. I have now gotten rid of 100 on this side of the equation and is on the other side. 
So what this is looking like is percent mass volume. We're going to take that and we're going to divide it by 100 so that it's no longer in a percent. And then that is going to equal the grams divided by the milliliters. Well, I need grams by itself, so to get rid of this milliliters, I'm going to multiply, since milliliters is in the denominator. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. So on the right side, I'm canceling out milliliters. This now gives me a new equation where grams is all by itself. And I have the milliliters, or the volume, multiplied by the percent so in this case, it's going to be that 10, and then divided by 100. Okay, so now I need to plug in the percent and the milliliters. Well, the percent, that's easy, but the milliliters, notice once again, we're given liters, not milliliters. So we need to convert this value. So over to the side here, I'm going to convert my 0.5 five liters to milliliters. And I'm going to do that the same way that I did up here, by moving that decimal point three times to the right. So one, two, three, so that's gonna give me 550 milliliters. So I'm gonna plug that 550 milliliters up in the numerator in my rearranged equation. I'm then going to multiply that by the percent, and that is 10. I'm then going to divide it by 100. So 550 times 10 divided by 100. I get 55. So that means I need 55 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in solution in 0.55 liters of total solution um, to get a 10%. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to backtrack, kind of checking my answer, right? And this isn't necessary, but I like to double check and make sure that I did things correctly and that I rearranged the equation accordingly. So I'm going to use my original equation, percent mass volume, and I'm going to plug in my grams of solute and divide it by my milliliters of solution to see if it does indeed equal the 10% given to me. Okay, this is just to check. So using this equation up here, grams of solute on the top, so that means my 55 grams on the top. In the denominator, I'm gonna put my milliliters of solution that I converted, 550, and then multiply it by 100. So what I should be getting is 10%. So 55 divided by 550 and then times 100. And I do indeed get 10%. So this is the correct answer. So the next question we're looking at is calculating the percent um, mass by mass instead of mass by volume. So mm, mass per mass, that just means that we're going to be taking the mass amounts instead of a volume amount, okay? So for this equation, um, let me write it off to the side here, it looks, oops, we have grams of solute on the top just like we did for the mass volume, but on the bottom in the denominator, instead of um, milliliters of solution, we have grams of solution. So that's the difference here. We're still multiplying by 100 to make it a percent. Now, mass, mass, percents are a little more intensive to calculate. We need to use our knowledge, um, the definition of a solution to solve this one. Okay, so a lot of times people will look at this problem and they'll just plug in the numbers given and be done with it, but it's not that simple on these ones. So we're calculating the mass mass percent of platinum. Okay, so that means platinum is our solute. Platinum is going to be in the numerator here. Okay, so I can even plug that number in right now because I know it. My 
amount of platinum in this ring is 4.5 grams. So let me just plug that in. Now grams of solution, this is the hard part. So the definition of solution, so solution is a solute plus a solvent. Okay. Well this ring that they're talking about contains gold and it also contains platinum. Okay, so one of these is our solute and we just determined that platinum was our solute, 4.5 grams, it's in lesser amount. The other one is going to be the solvent. Okay, so platinum, that's our solute. So that means that gold must be our solvent. And it is, it's in greater amount. Because we have 14 grams of gold and only 4.5 grams of platinum. So one's the solute and one's the solvent. So to figure out the total grams of solution that we need, we need to add these two together because together the solute and the solvent make the total solution. So I don't want to just take this 14 grams and plug it in the denominator because this 14 grams is just the solvent. I don't need grams of solvent, I need grams of solution. Okay, so let's calculate it grams of the solution. To do that, we're taking our solute, that 4.5 grams, and we're gonna add it to the 14 grams of solvent of gold. So added together, I get 18.50. So this is total grams of solution, and that is what I want to plug in down here. So throwing this in the calculator, I know I'm kind of all over the board, sorry about that. I'm going to get an answer. What percent of it is platinum? So I have 4.5 divided by 18.5 times 100. So 24%, how many sig figs are you looking at? Four, oops, just 24.32. So 24.32% is platinum. So that means the other approximately 76% is made of gold. Okay, so depending upon what materials you have, a different concentration calculation might apply. So in this case, it would be hard to do mass volume percent because gold and platinum are both solids at room temperature. So trying to get the volume of gold or platinum um, just would make things more difficult. All right, so let's look now at this second problem I have on the board. It's calculating molarity, okay? So we're switching kind of types of concentration. We're not looking at a percent right now. So molarity with an R. So molarity, that equation is capital M for molarity is equal to moles of solute over liters of solution. Notice liters. All right, so some equations have milliliters, some have liters, so you need to be really aware of units. So let's see if we have this information actually before we solve. So reading the question, 2.2 liters of solution, is that the units I want? Liters, yes. They also gave us molar amounts, so 4.8 moles of sodium hydroxide. Do I want moles? Yes, I do. So simply plug it in. I have 4.8 on top, I have 2.2 on the bottom. Dividing 4.8 divided by 2.2, I get to two sig figs, 2.2. And that the units on that are moles per liter or just capital M for molarity.
Okay. This is molarity is the most common form of concentration that we use in chemistry. Um, you may have noticed. Well, I don't even think we did any reactions in lab <laughs> with chemicals, but if we did, a lot of the reagent bottles um, have molarity on them. So it'll say the concentration of this hydrochloric acid is uh, 0.3 molar, for instance, and that's the molarity. And we actually use this um, calculation to figure that out because in chemistry we often use moles. That's why we learned how to convert between grams and moles. Um, and we also use either liters or milliliters. So let's look at a few more. So this problem is asking us to solve um, in several different types of units and then asking which unit is more suitable. So the reason we have so many different ways to calculate concentration is because depending upon what we are measuring or what we want the concentration of, a different um, calculation might be necessary. So in this one, we have one gram sample of stream water, and it was found to contain 1.2 times 10 to the negative sixth grams of lead. So that negative sixth uh, is just saying that it's a very, very small number, um, which is good because we don't want lead in our stream water. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna calculate the concentration of that lead um, with percent mass, mass, also parts per thousand and parts per million. So you can see how to calculate those. So. The thing about these three concentrations um, is that they're very similar to each other. So what I mean by that is uh, percent mass, let's just write the equations down, is grams of solute, so we've done this before, divided by grams of solution, and then since it's a percent, we're multiplying it by 100. Well, parts per thousand, we're doing the same thing. We're taking grams of solute divided by grams of solution. The only difference is, instead of multiplying by 100, we're going to be multiplying by 1,000. That's why it's called parts per 1,000. Okay, now parts per million, same thing. So I'm just going to put these little quotations because it's grams of solute divided by grams of solution. The only thing that differs is what we're multiplying it by. So this time we're multiplying it by a million. And a million is really just 1 times 10 to the 6th. So I'm just going to put this times 10 to the 6th. But if you would like to enter a million and all those zeros into your calculator, you will get the same answer. All right, so let's look at this. So which one of those two numbers is our solution. Okay, well here we have one gram sample of stream water. So that's the solution as a whole. In that one gram we have water and then all of its components that it contains, all of the solutes. Okay, so this one gram that is our solution because it is the water with the lead in it. So to calculate mass percent I'm going to take and put that one gram sample in the denominator because that is my grams of solution. Now what's going to go up top? Grams of solute. So it's the one in lesser amount. In this case, the lead. So 1.2 times 10 to the negative six grams of lead. And with mass percent, I'm multiplying that by 100. So entering this into my calculator, I get How many zeros is that? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I need you guys in class to give me these answers so I don't have to stop and <laughs> look. Um, or if you want to write it in scientific notation, one, two, three, four, five, six times 10 to the negative six. Oh, I forgot to multiply by 100. See, that's why I need you guys in class. What the heck? So, Erase that answer, 1.2 times 100. Okay, so I should have three zeros. Or in scientific notation, it would be 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth percent. Okay, so weird percent, right? I'm gonna guess this is not the most suitable unit. 
but let's do the other two and, and compare. So for parts per thousand, I'm going to do the same thing. So 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 1, which is just the same thing. But instead of multiplying by 100, I'm going to multiply by 1,000. So what that's essentially going to do is it's just going to move that decimal point over 1. So I'm going to get 0 0.0012 or 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3rd PPT. So that's the units, PPT. <laughs> um, parts per million, okay, same thing. Except for this time, I'm multiplying it by 10 to the sixth, positive sixth, or a million. So notice these will cancel each other out, okay? And you can put it in your calculator to prove that. But what you should get should be 1.2. All right, so looking at these values here, I mean, that's kind of an awkward percent, right? Who has 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth percent? So that's probably not the most suitable unit. This one as well, I mean, we're still dealing with a power, right? Times 10 to the negative third. And not everybody knows what that means, right? However, 1.2, that's a whole number. That makes sense to people. I mean, it's a decimal point, but it's 1.2. That's an acceptable number to most people. So this would be the most suitable unit because um, of the form of that number. So 1.2 parts per million would probably be how this is reported. They would say 1.2 parts per million of this stream is made up of lead. All right, so let's go back and look at molarity and molality. So the first question um, is saying, okay, if I had 3.2 grams of sodium hydroxide and I dissolved it in 10 milliliters of solution, Let's calculate the molarity, okay? Now this is gonna be helpful for the solutions lab, actually. You're gonna be doing uh, similar calculations. So this is what we do in lab. We measure out the grams on a scale, we dissolve it in water um, to make a total amount of a certain solution, and then we need to know the concentration of that solution. So that's what we're doing here, but we're gonna to have to go more in depth with it because notice, let me write down the equation, molarity with an R, to calculate it, we need moles of the solute, which in this case is sodium hydroxide, divided by liters of solution. Okay, well, I don't have moles, I have grams. And I don't have liters, I have milliliters. So there's a lot of things we're going to need to do to solve this problem. We're going to need to do some conversions and some calculations to get moles and to get liters. So let's start by figuring out what the moles are going to be. Okay, so let's start with moles. I need moles of solute, moles of sodium hydroxide. So to solve for moles of sodium hydroxide, they gave me grams. We've done this. We've done it in chapter four, right? We can go from grams to moles. In order to go from grams to moles, what do we need? We need molar mass, okay? So I'm gonna calculate the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So molar mass, NaOH, remember when we're calculating molar mass, we make a list of all elements present, which I need my periodic table. One second. So looking at your periodic table, as well as the number of atoms, present of each. So sodium, there is one sodium in that chemical formula, one oxygen, one hydrogen. So sodium, Na, its molar mass is 22.99, oxygen is 16, and then hydrogen is that 1.008. So let's add all of those together, and I get 22.99 plus 16 plus 1.008. I'm rounding that up <laughs> to 40. And the units on it are grams per mole. So those units are the reason we can use this in a as a conversion factor to get between grams and moles. So doing my railroad tracks, 
what I'm going to put in this upper right hand corner is what's given to me in the problem, so that 3.2 grams. I'm then going to use my molar mass, putting the grams portion on the bottom, and the mole portion on the top, so that grams cancel, and once I do that division, 3.2 divided by 40, I know my moles, it is 0 0.08. So mole part completed. So now what I'm going to do is figure out my liters of solution. Okay, so um, convert milliliters to liters. Okay, so I have 10 milliliters. I'm going to use, since it's metric to metric, my KHD DCM putting my liters in the middle. This time I'm starting with milliliters. So I'm still moving the decimal point three times to get to liters, but I'm moving it in the opposite direction. Notice I'm moving it to the left this time. So I'm gonna start at my decimal point and I'm gonna move it one, two, three to the left. What's gonna go in that empty space is a zero. So 10 milliliters is equal to point zero one zero liters. And I'm not worrying about sig figs because these are numbers that I'm going to use to solve. I'll worry about sig figs at the end, okay? <clears throat> so this is liters of solution. This is moles of solute. So I'm going to take these and plug them into my equation over here. So to solve for molarity, I'm going to take my moles of sodium hydroxide, 0 0.08, and I'm going to divide that by my liters of solution, 0 0.010, dividing those, and I know I should be able to do that in my head, but I want to be sure, I get 8. Now, sig fig wise, I need 2, so it's going to be 8.0, and then either moles per liter or capital M for the units. So, after all this work, what I figured out is that I have an 8 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. So this would be probably the hardest type of um, molarity problem that you would see, is where you have to calculate the moles, you have to convert the milliliters to liters before you plug it all into the equation, because we're, we're taking stuff from chapter 4 and bringing it back. All right. With that one completed, let's go to the next one. So the next one, we're calculating molality. So make sure you're reading these carefully uh, when you go to solve because they just differ by a letter, right? Molarity with an R, molality with an L. So molality is a completely different type of equation. It's represented by a little m. We're still taking the moles of solute, but instead of liters of solution, like in molarity, we're taking kilograms of solvent, so solvent being the median that the solute was dissolved in, the one in greater amount. All right, so we are given moles, so we don't have to do a conversion like up here, it's given to us. We are also given kilograms, and that's what we want. So no conversions necessary for this one, so let's just plug in what we were given. We have 1.28 divided by 22, and we get, Zero point, how many sig figs are we looking at? Two, zero point zero five eight. And then units can either be moles per kilogram, right? Moles per kilogram. Or just like with molarity, put an M after it, but a little m. So little m is molality, capital M is molarity. Okay. All right. All right, so in this one, we're looking at molarity again, but it's a little different, okay? So calculate, it, calculate the molarity. So you automatically think molarity, moles of solute divided by liters of solution, okay? But this one's different because if you notice, as we read, the word dilution is used. Also, you are given two volumes, okay? So if you're given two volumes, you can't use your classic M is equal to moles divided by liters, because you have two liters, okay? So all of these, the dilutions, the fact that there's two volumes, are hints to show you that this is a dilution problem. 
So with dilution problems, that's where we're going to use that M1, V1 is equal to M2, V2. So the M's being molarities, the V's being volumes. Okay, so this is very similar to a lot of those gas concept problems we were looking at. You're going to be given three out of the four variables and you solve for the fourth one. Okay, so in this case, let's just make a list like we did for those gas concept equations. So I need to make a solution. I'm calculating the molarity of a solution. So molarity, I'm gonna call that M1. That's what I'm gonna solve for. And you, you could have chosen M2, that's fine, as long as you're pairing together the, the correct two um, variables. So molarity of a solution made by diluting 0.5 liters of a three molar solution to a total volume of two liters. Okay, so the molarity that I'm calculating is of the new solution that has a total volume of two liters. Okay, so these two are going together. So my M1 that I'm solving for is gonna have a total volume of two liters. So that's gonna be my V1, is the two liters. Now my M2 and my V2 are gonna be these guys because they're saying I have 0.5 liters of a three molar solution. So these two belong together. So they're gonna both be my sub twos. So 0 0.50 liters. Oops, I put that in the wrong spot, didn't I? That's a volume, so I'm gonna put that as my V2. And then this three molar, that's the concentration of that 0.5 liters. So let's plug in. M1 is what I'm solving for, so I have no value for that. V1, the new volume that I want, is a total of two liters of solution. Leave the units out of it so we're not getting confused with um, letters everywhere. And then on the other side of the equation, my M2 and V2, I'm going to multiply those by each other. So I get three molar solution, and there's a total of 0 0.5 liters of it. So if I want M1 by itself, I'm going to have to divide this side of the equation by 2 so that that cancels out. 2 divided by 2 is just 1. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. So my M1 is going to be taking 3 times 0.5 and dividing it by 2. So my new concentration of my diluted solution will be 0.75 molar. Okay. And that makes sense because I started with a three molar solution. And when you dilute something, the concentration should be less. And it is. It went from a three molar concentration down to a 0.75 molar concentration.